There we go. Roly poly. Egypt, but not Egypt. All the fun stuff we do here at the church. Thank you for joining us today. We're so excited that you're joining with us here online and being a part or even joining us via the church app. We're so excited that, that you are a part of our church family. We are so thankful. Um, it has just been a wonderful season. Um, all the things that have been going on here at the church. And uh, so we are excited about that. The last couple weeks, we've been talking about hospitality. And we've been talking about uh, what does it really mean? What is its importance? What are some of the elements that are a part of it? And then how do we have the practical side of hospitality? How, what is appropriate? What is not appropriate? Uh, how do we do it now in the interesting times in which we live? And um, how important that is? And so those are very real things that we need to, um, to understand while we practice hospitality. Not only are we doing it that is acceptable for our culture in one sense, but also to make sure that we're being biblically correct. And, uh, and that's a major, major part of, of what we do. And so this last Wednesday, we did things a little different, uh, just like we were doing the last couple of weeks, um, where our, our class on Wednesday night would go through a breakout session. And so they had breakouts this last Wednesday night, and um, it was so amazing to watch the discussions and to see where things are going. And so I'm going to bring you their discussion form that they had last night for you this morning so that you can see really the importance of what was going on and, and where we kind of guided the discussion to kind of conclude our, our topic of hospitality over these last three weeks. And so first and foremost, we looked at Romans chapter 12, verses 14 through 21. Now in this passage, Paul is writing to the church in Rome during the time of Emperor Nero, where persecution is heavily underway. Many believers had to deal with the hardships of a hostile government. Um, a government that was not entirely friendly to them. Many of their friends and family members may have been taken. Land may have been seized, yet the church remained. And a group of people who still gathered to glorify God. Which, how amazing is that to see that they still gathered to glorify God in, in all of that regards. Okay. Um, and they rose, many people have rose against them. Neighbors probably would report them and more. However, they kept at it. Now, see, I'm not surprised at all when I look at this, how Paul wrote to encourage them in this season. He wrote to encourage them to continue in the good works such as these. Now, can you imagine them reading, uh, reading about having to keep their head high and continue to love those and to serve those who have been offending to them? And so that's amazing. And so the questions we ask is, one, when you read Romans 12, 14 through 21, how important it is to understand and what are your thoughts on the passage you just read, to understand a little bit of the history around that passage and how important it is to see that, um, that there are people who, who needed that encouragement and they needed that strengthening. Um, because that same passage, uh, you know, they're having to deal with and love their enemies, those who are in opposition to them. They're having to, to love and serve those around them who have maybe granted them hardship and difficulty. And so that's a major part of, of some of the things that are going on there. And they have to practice hospitality towards those. And so, you know, how does that challenge you? When you read that passage in, in Romans 12, um, how does that challenge you to practice love and hospitality towards those who are in opposition towards you or who may have offended you? A lot of times in our culture, I think nowadays, when we get offended by someone, we immediately want to cut them off as opposed to continue to love and continue to practice hospitality. And I think that's, that's the problem, is we don't look at the fullness that we can still have a relationship with the individual, even though we're offended, even though we might have disagreements, that we can still di that discuss, we can still value one another's safety, um, and that we can still protect if need be. And, um, you know, that we all have basic human needs, and that when it comes to hospitality, we can, we can value the idea of meeting those basic human needs. And now when I talk about basic human needs, I'm talking about shelter, food, clothing, um, provision, uh, that level of basic human needs. And so it's important that we can still uh, uh, practice hospitality in those regards, no matter what views we have. And um, even those who are offensive to us, that we still have an opportunity to go forward in a state of grace and mercy and to be the hands and feet of Jesus to regard to those who, who might have been in, in great opposition to us. And so that's, that's important for us to, to see that. And so we want to think about those things. 
The second and third questions that I have for us is this, that seeing in the, in the scriptures it says that the Lord says it is mine to avenge. It is God who will avenge his righteous. It is God who will avenge his people. And that has to impact us. We have to see that when it's God who avenges us, it's, I don't have to avenge myself. God will do it for me. And so I may go through hardship. I may go through a difficult situation or, or go into a terrible place um, and, and uh, be brought low. Or, or brought into a troubled position. But to recognize that it is still God who's going to avenge us. It's still God who's going to, to do something about that. Um, that should impact how we view our personal responsibility. And so recognizing how does, God's, how does God saying he will avenge you, how does that impact your personal view of, of, your, of your responsibility? Um, because it, in the scriptures it does say, it says that it is mine to avenge, therefore... Love your neighbor, or, or you know, uh, feed those, feed your enemies, clothe them, grant them peace. Um, and he quotes Proverbs, and so that's a major point. And so there is this this uh, impact where God is going to be our avenger, that it does impact our personal responsibility in that we don't need to be overly concerned with avenging ourselves and let God do that work. We can continue in the good work that he's already established for us. And so... That's a major, a major part for us, okay? So uh, when they have gone through reading Romans 12, we will go on and we'll read Roman, uh, Genesis 19. Genesis 19 is an interesting topic, especially when we talk about hospitality. Um, and hospitality, what does that refer to us here? Because in Genesis 19, 1 through 13, um, this last passage, passage deals with an interesting point when it comes to hospitality. The issue of responsibility and protection. The issue of responsibility and protection. Because as I read this passage, my mind turns to Lot and his actions, both towards his guests and towards the people outside the city. Because he's interacting with two people. He's interacting with groups. He's interacting with his guests in his household. But then he's also interacting with the men of the city of Sodom. And so it's an interesting thing to see there. Many times when we think of hospitality, we can see the simplicity of serving others as something that is risk-free. I'm, I'm only going to serve so much as it does not bring me harm. I'm only going to serve so much as my reputation is not slighted. I'm only going to serve so much as I'm okay. And so we really try to take that risk-free when we try to bring hospitality. But really, in reality, it can be quite messy. And even more so, hospitality, biblical hospitality, can be really messy when we live in an environment that is opposed to the righteous values found in God's word. I mean, because that's, that's the idea. There was one way of hospitality that was complementary, not complementary, uh, uh, what is the word I'm thinking of? Um, uh, acceptable, but not acceptable. It was um, the commonality. Uh, there we go. There is a level of hospitality that was common to the place of Sodom, However, because of its unrighteousness behavior, of its, of its unbiblical and immoral propositions, that it was unacceptable for Lot to do for the guests in his house. And so Lot had to run, um, run guard. He had to uh, run in front of him and make sure that those people did not come into his home and harm his guests. And so he had to practice protection of his household guests. And it, it got messy and some of... If you read Genesis 19, 1 through 13, you will see where he has to, um, he's protecting these men and he makes some awful judgment calls. Um, as a parent, you would think that that is questionable. Why would that man make, offer his own daughters to the men of Sodom when they're his daughters? But the, the unrighteousness, and so he makes some terrible decisions, but the principle that, he was, that, that I want to point out in this passage is that he saw the importance of, of, of even helping the men and protecting his guests. And so um, in a place where righteous protection and righteous responsibility um, can be messy and, and not risk-free when it's in an environment that is opposed to God's word and, and righteousness found within it. And so read Genesis 19, 1 through 13. Read that passage and see uh, and, and think about it and process it. What do you think about the passage that you just read? What do you think about what does it mean and, and how does it speak to you? Okay, because there's ways that that passage could impact you. How does it impact 
How does that passage impact you when you think about hospitality as a means of protecting someone versus entertaining someone? We've talked about it in some of the past episodes in the past weeks that hospitality uh, in our modern culture, and our modern interpretation, involves a lot of uh, this idea of entertaining. I'm entertaining a guest. I'm bringing someone to have a share a meal in my home. I'm making sure that they have a good time. I'm making sure that they had lots of fun before I send them on their way. And so our modern Western influence of hospitality really does give us this sense of uh, 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 that this entertaining side of things and, and not much more than that. But really, when you, we look at the biblical values and the biblical examples of hospitality, we see that quite really it involved more protecting and so when we read Genesis, Genesis 19, how does this impact your view of, of, of protecting versus entertaining and how important it is? Because there's, there's principles in here. Which, which leads us on to this, this final discussion point is when we look at this passage and we see that, that Lot and the situation that he faced, um, what principles does this passage teach us in regards to our own home? What does this passage teach us? When it comes to our own homes and, and, and our, our areas of residence or, or where we lay down at night and um, those in our households, that's important for us to see that we, we are responsible for those in our homes, whether it's a guest or, or a family member or uh, a possession, whatever it is, we're responsible for those things and we have to um, handle those things appropriately and, and honorably and and so that's, a, that's important for us to, to grasp that. Um, I think a lot of times we, we think of hospitality of serving and giving and, uh, and um, you know, risk-free that we forget uh, a lot more to it. But really there's a, a heavy side of it where um, real hospitality means I'm going to protect those that are in my home, in my household. That I'm, gonna, I'm going to defend them from anyone who seeks to harm them. Um, and that's important for us. And so anyways, this last Wednesday, these two topics were heavily discussed, and I wanted to make sure that they were given their due. I, I know when we, we've gone through the past sessions, um, the past couple weeks, that there's so much content to go over that for the sake of time, I have to really break it up, and we might go over things briefly that have some great principles to it, but what happens is, is that it's not given its fullness, and so there's two of these these two difficult subjects. In Romans, it's, it's more about how do we care for or practice hospitality in a place that is in opposition to us? How do we do it in a place? How do we love our enemies? Um, if I can say it that way, how do we love our enemies and those that are uh, um, drastically opposed to us? And you know, whether they seek to harm us or they offend us or whatever, uh, whatever terms you want to use to describe that aspect of it. And um, because I think a lot of times we think of those who offend us and we want to keep them at arm's length. Then the other hard part was the idea of this, this concept of protecting um, versus entertaining and, and really getting into that idea when it comes to hospitality that protection is a major part of, of what, what it's about. And, um, you know, we live in a day where uh, we don't protect our neighbors or, or we... We, we entertain, but we, we, we let people go, and, and it's, it's a difficult situation to face, uh, the hardship. A lot of the eyes of the nation are, are on Minnesota and Minneapolis with, with what happened with the, um, the declaration uh, of the conviction for uh, Derek Chauvin with the uh, George Floyd uh, murder trials and what's going on there and how that what has been resolved and what, what future implications does that have. And then with this new, um, just within the last two weeks here with uh, Dante Wright and, and all the things and, and elements that that holds. And, um, and so it's really interesting, again, talking about hospitality in the midst of these high topic uh, issues that have to be addressed. And um, I want to make sure that when it comes down to it, our, we're, we're appropriately equipped to handle the situation righteously, love and truth. Not sacrificing truth, but at the same time, not sacrificing love, that we have to stand on both of these together. And, and how do we do it right? And the only answers that are available to how to do it correctly is, is one, by the Word of God. We have to be in the Word of God 
reading the scriptures, applying the scriptures, and, and understanding that the word of God is perfect for all things, and that there is truth that we can stand upon that. And then the second thing is even more important, is to have discernment of the Holy Spirit, and discerning the days and times, and discerning how to do certain actions, and discerning what is right and wrong, and, and, and discerning, uh, making properly, dis- making you making proper decisions based upon the guidance and the leadership and understanding of the Holy Spirit. And that's why those two things need to go hand in hand. And so I hope that these these videos are good for you. This one is short today. Um, it's primarily because there's not a real chunk of lesson. To this This last Wednesday has been more about discussion amongst the groups. Um, and so it's a lot less lesson planning on my part and more about just giving guidance for discussion. And, um, and so with these questions and these points that I've raised, uh, they had really great discussion about that. Um, and so I hope that you've been encouraged by this. I hope that you've been challenged by this. If you want those Bible verses again for your own study and your own, um, own Bible perusal and to really go through and, and learn them, it is Romans 12, verses 14 through 21. And then in the Old Testament, Genesis 19, verse 1 through 13. And uh, I hope that you enjoy uh, these videos. Next week, we'll be coming at uh, uh, the topic of discernment. We're going to take the next few weeks and talk about discernment and its importance and the value that it plays. And so you do not want to miss uh, those topics. And I hope that you find them very rewarding and uh, you will uh, hopefully uh, gain a lot out of it. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for for being a part of our study. Thank you for being a part of us online. We really appreciate it. Let us know that you enjoy these videos. Comment, like, subscribe. Um, Be a part of these things just so we know our audience and know that we're reaching and uh, to be a part of that. For those who are watching via the church app, we appreciate you. Hope you like the church app. If there's any improvements that you think that could happen to that, let us know. We would like to always keep the, uh, the technology going forward and how we can improve little things all the time. Again, you see my environment's changing, and uh, lighting is changing, position is changing. Why? Because I'm always trying to make sure that we can get something better, what looks the best, and uh, always make things fresh and new for you. So, again, I'm Pastor Ryan at Albert Lee Assembly of God Church. If you're in the area, southern Minnesota or northern Iowa, and within driving distance of Albert Lee, we would love to see you on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night, and it'll be great. We are live streaming our services Sunday morning, 10 a.m., and then our midweek videos come to you Thursday morning. Thank you. Have a great day, and God bless. Here I go as I turn off the camera.